there's a saying in my tribe, Izzat mare, pen mare te maf. Even if I have nothing, I should have honor. I come from a country where honor matters more to people than food on their plates. In small villages where people may struggle with deep poverty, they actually cherish honor because that's their only possession. That's their only true asset. People trade with each other, bring businesses to each other, they support each other and invite each other to social activities because of that honor, and so everybody works really hard to preserve their share of it. When I was growing up in a small tribal community in Balochistan, I knew two things very well. Number one, honor matters a lot to my father and my uncles. Number two, being the eldest daughter in my family, I was the sole person who could dishonor them because women are still considered the wealth of their fathers and of their uncles. As I grew older, this anxiety and fear around this topic grew stronger for me because I started hearing the word murder in the same sentence as honor. Girls and women killed because they have brought shame to their male relatives. When there's a conflict in a community, in a tribe, it is honorable to exchange young daughters. It's honorable to exchange daughters as brides to solve the conflict. When your brother's son can't find a bride, it's actually honorable to give your infant daughter as a bride for him, to be married off when she hits puberty. I remember one time, my cousins and I were playing in our small mud house in Sindh. As I was scooping the mud in my hands to make a clay doll, my cousin whispered to me, do you know that our uncle has killed his wife because she dishonored him? My heart sank. I, I just didn't understand what was dishonorable to men. What is it that was dishonorable? Much later, I found out what honor killings are, actually. When girls and women are suspected of having relationships before or outside of marriage, they're killed to restore the family's honor. This really outraged me. This really scared me. And even though I was a happy child, I grew up in the fear that if I made one mistake, I would dishonor my father. But one day, my father asked me to come and sit next to him. His face was very serious, so I knew there was, this was going to be very important. I was, I was a little child at that time. He's like, Khali, do you know how you will dishonor me? I froze, I literally froze. My heart sank and my hands became cold and I couldn't breathe. I knew that he knew the answer to this question, but he just wanted to hear it from me. You will dishonor me when you bring bad grades from school, he said. I, I thought I couldn't hear him correctly. I have risked every bit of my dignity for you and your sisters by bringing you to the city. I have brought tears, he said to me. I have brought tears to my, into my father's eyes by not letting you be a child uh, bride. I have argued with my friends to give you the freedom, and with this freedom, they tell me that you can easily destroy my honor. My honor now lies with you, my Khali, he said. And the day you stop working hard, you will completely dishonor me. He kept speaking, but I couldn't hear him because my universe was suddenly taking a whole new shape around me. My heart and my mind were expanding with this new awareness, with this fresh new knowledge. My brain just opened up with this new information. A secret was spoken to me that day, a secret that changed my life forever. Honor is not murder. Honor is not killing your daughters. Dishonor is not a girl who goes to school. Dishonor is not a girl who plays outside. It is not a girl who refuses to marry at a young age. It is not a girl who speaks, laughs, and takes the opportunities that come in front of her. Instead, honor is identity. Honor is dignity. It is serving those you love with integrity and hard work. Honor is being kind and open to strangers. It is being the best in the world and praying for the best for people. 
Honor is being a nation that people praise and respect everywhere. My father that day set me free, but then nothing prepared me for this. As I was growing up in my teenage, coming into my teenage phase, we went back to the villages as, I go, as we go on every vacation, school vacation, and I could not find one of my cousins. I asked about her, no one was telling me anything. This cousin who was just two years older than me, feisty, really powerful, she had fought really hard to go to school, someone I really looked up to and loved playing with. I found out that my uncle killed her because she fell in love. This was amazingly shocking for me, and this was extremely recent in the 2002 year. The same honor that my father had gifted to me and I had taken my own, I had used that honor to be a woman of power. That same honor had killed my cousin. I was extremely outraged. And with this rage in my heart, I started my fight against this crime at the age of 16. I started going door to door, mobilizing young people, going online and starting campaigns, mobilizing activists all around the world, challenging my cultural norms, shouting against the policies in my country. We, set, we faced a lot of setbacks. We faced a lot of opposition. But finally, in 2009, we actually had a solution. And the solution was to promote the tribal traditions. We decided that we will use what has been misused all this time, tradition and religion. By going to the villages and educating men and women about what women's rights are under Islam and working to promote the cultures, and working to end the negative cultures by promoting the beautiful parts of the cultures. This was 2009, it took us five more years to perfect this model, and in 2013, we finally had it. And I call it Sugar, which means skilled and confident woman. In Sugar, we engage both men and women, we give socioeconomic opportunities to women, and we give education to men about women's rights, and then we enable them to work together, shoulder to shoulder. We go into every village challenging men about their belief over Islam. Because in Islam, actually, there's a lot of parts in the Holy Quran where God constantly talks about women's rights. Do you know the word for daughters is actually rahmat, which means blessing. And that is the word used for rain. Whenever it's raining, they say it's rahmat. We go to tribal leaders and we remind them that their dishonor is actually in their traditions ending in their cultures dying, in their songs being unsung, and in their heritage, heritage just losing, going away from them. And we give women economic opportunities to rise and become leaders. And so that's how we fight honor killings. We actually take the focus of honor from seclusion of women to preserving culture, to enabling women into becoming leaders. I'm really proud to say that, you know, all these years ago when I started my journey, it started with rage in my heart, with deep anger and hatred in my heart. But it has now evolved into this journey of love and forgiveness. I now redefine honor for myself and my country through these three things, education, pride, and awareness. In education, through my Sugar Foundation, we give education to women about their rights, but also give them opportunities to unleash the potential in them, to give them trainings and grants to become leaders. In identity, my husband David and I have launched a social enterprise in the United States called the Chai Spot. It's a place that promotes the beautiful parts of my country by bringing a taste of it into the United States and giving 50% of its profits to women and children in Pakistan through different projects. And through awareness, I redefine honor by telling my very personal story and the stories of many other girls in the form of this memoir published by Random House, which just came out. Because honestly, at the end of the day, honor is not our enemy. It is the strength that enables us to thrive. 
Honor is what helps us stand up for justice. It allows us to speak our truth. It is what makes us do the right thing. Honor is what, I really believe, honor is what thrives companies. It empowers companies, sustains communities, and inspires every individual in the world to do their best and the, to give the best in the world. And hence, it is time to redefine honor, to reclaim honor for ourselves before it is used against us. Because honor is not the inheritance of men who use it to control women. Everyone should have honor. Every woman should have honor. You should have honor, and I should have honor. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you.